Hello, everyone. Hello. Good evening. It is Sunday night, and Sunday night is a time when I typically like to do nothing. I don't like to really prepare things for my lessons on Sunday nights. I prefer to just kind of watch TV with TV with my husband, maybe watch some football, but I've been putting off doing this live. So I wanted to come on and update everyone about the changes that I've been seeing in the private teaching realm. Particularly, I've been working mostly in China. I do have some students who are in other parts of the world, but China is where I am spending most of my time in preparing my lessons and trying to kind of figure out my schedule. So I did have a Zoom and a few people came to that Zoom and they were able to ask some questions. We ran around and learned some different things. And so I thought I would go through an update. There were several people who said that they um, wanted an update. And so for that reason, I thought that I would do that for you. So the first thing that we're going to, going to update is talking about the different platforms. So this has not changed in that um, Zoom, Vuv, Zoomu, and Classin tend to be the most used platforms. LearnCube is also a platform that some teachers have found and do like. I cannot say for sure that LearnCube has successfully been able to be utilized in China uh, and else still allowing all the features on some of the interactive slides. That being said, a lot of the platforms really struggle with the interactivity of the slides as far as the drag and drop option. There have been a few students who have iPads who can do it, but most of them cannot, whether you use Zoom, Vuv, Zoomu, and then Classin. Now, I wanted to share with you a great resource, and that is, if you guys, um, is Facebook, okay? Facebook is a great resource. However, a lot of people are not using it to its full extent. Please search on the groups for the question you're asking. Every day there's at least 10 people who say, how do I get paid? What payment system should I use? That has been discussed multiple times. And in my first video, I talked about the number one thing to worry about if you're going to teach privately is how you're gonna get paid. Because obviously that is really, really important. So PayPal can be used in China. That is the system that I actually had been using more so for the last couple of years because um, my initial attempt at creating a Stripe account was not effective. However, I have since joined the people who say Stripe. And the reason for that is because the fees are lower. Um, there are people in the Facebook groups who get really frustrated because they try to get Stripe activated and they are unable to do so. One of the things is that Stripe has to verify that you are a credible business. So I had listened to someone's advice and I had given my Instagram site as proof of my business. Well, that did not pass. They required something else. So then I provided my LinkedIn and my LinkedIn was what satisfied Stripe's requirements as a business, and I was able to activate my Stripe account and also activate WeChat Pay. So that's what was taking forever with the WeChat, is they had to activate, um, they had to determine that my business was legitimate. That being said, there are some people who just cannot figure it out. If you have not already done so, I would highly encourage you to join this Facebook group as this topic has been discussed a lot. <laughs> so join Adventure Abroad English Private Teaching Tips. I had Michelle on my channel here. I did an interview with her a few weeks ago and she continues to be a wealth of knowledge. On this group, we talk about Stripe versus PayPal and what are the pros and cons of both? Hey, Lori, nice to see you. So I would encourage you to search Stripe. Please use the magnifying glass, the search feature on the Facebook, Facebook groups before you post a question because you will be able to see a lot of information 
and um, it will be quicker for you that way rather than waiting for people. So search for Stripe on the Adventure Abroad English private teaching tips if you have questions about Stripe. Also, you can search out this in particular teacher on that page because she has created an excellent video on how to set up a Stripe account. Kendall, um, you have been a really fantastic asset to that Facebook group and to a lot of people. She's doing a ton of research on how to use ClassIn as a platform and also how to accept payments. So I would highly encourage you to join the Facebook group, Adventure Abroad English. In my opinion, it is the best group and I am in a lot of different groups and I post a lot. I ask questions because that is how I improve my business. I do the research. So join this group um, and then you can get a lot of questions answered. So PayPal still does work. You can send a link. It does have a slightly higher percentage, but for some people that's just more comfortable for them. Please let's not argue about what's better because I know some people have success with Stripe and some people just really frust get frustrated when you can't get it to work. But you can check out the video that Kindle did. It is uh, walks you through step by step. One point is that with Stripe, you do not need to set up a website. You don't need a website for Stripe. Um, they will tell you that. And some people will talk about that in Facebook groups. But again, I used my LinkedIn account and that satisfy, satisfied Stripe's requirement as verifying my business. I do think there's some subjectivity in the process of verifying businesses because some people will say, oh, I used this and it worked. And some people say, I had one person say that they had used a Facebook, a teacher, um, he used his teacher page from Facebook from like four years ago that he hadn't done anything with and it passed. So that's where it gets frustrating with the subjectivity of how some people can make it happen easily and some people cannot. So that is what I would suggest. Platforms wise, Zoom, let's go back to platforms. Zoom does not need to be downloaded by the parents. And many parents will say, I can't download this in China. They don't need to download it. They can just access your Zoom classroom through the browser. I am aware of some small language schools that are based in California that service mainly Chinese students. And all they do is give Zoom links and it works. I think what happens is sometimes, you know, the parents get kind of confused and lost, get lost in that process. So Zoom does work. They don't have to download it to their computer. They can just use the link you sent to them in the browser. Um, Zumu, Z-H-U-M-U, -U, is the Chinese <clears throat> counterpart of Zoom. However, since I posted my last video on this, I have learned that Zumu now requires that you be invited to use that platform from someone in China, and then it asks you for further information. So I believe people are struggling in getting Zumu to be an option for them if they are based outside of China. I used Zumu this morning and I hope, keeping my fingers crossed, that I don't get blocked from it because it, it does work quite well for some of my students. Vuv, V-O-O-V, is another one that will work. Sometimes it can be a little glitchy as far as getting where you can see the student at the same time as share your screen. I finally figured that out in the video feed in the top right-hand corner. I had to click on the little lines and then it dropped down the other box for my student's video feed. So you can use that as well. Um, Classin. So Classin is kind of like the darling of um, platforms right now. And again, in the Adventure Abroad English Facebook group, it's talked about a lot. Um, Kendall, again, teacher Kendall, has done a ton of research on how to make Classin work effectively. And the good thing about Classin is that it is something that's quite familiar to a lot of Chinese families. I... I'm sorry, my kids are walking in and out, so then they make my dogs bark. But anyway, um, Classin is something that's extremely familiar to Chinese families. I do have some, um, several of my parents who are teachers in the public school systems in China, mainly Beijing, and they say that they have to use Classin in their classroom. And um, 
my friends who are teachers in China actually don't like Classen. They don't like me to use it with their students. And it's unfortunate because it's nice when everything's there. You can share a brief note with your student after the class. You can put homework in there. You can load everything up um, on this on the um, you can put your files in there so you're not bogging down your computer. It does make it nice. However, it's not the most user friendly. I'm starting to get more familiar with it. I don't like how it, it interfaces. Um, I don't like how small the screen is. Um, and that was the main complaint that my parents have is that they say it's the, the font is too small. And I've messed with it and I've done a lot of things and I've watched a lot of videos. And I just think that that is one of the downfalls of Classen. That being said, it can be an extremely useful tool. So what am I using? Currently, I am using Zoom, Zoomu, Vuv, and Classen. I'm using all of them. I would love to go to just one platform for ease of use, but I do have some students who have slower internet, and so they have to use Vuv. I have found that Vuv tends to work even if their internet is not the best. Um, the other ones tend to be more difficult if they have spotty Wi-Fi. You can always encourage them to get an Ethernet cord. It's something that I did suggest to one of my families, and I sent them a link so they could find it, and they did go out and purchase it. So that is an option as well. Um, if you'd like to learn more about Classin, there is a Facebook group. It's an unofficial Classin Facebook group as well check it out. There are questions asked there, but also Classen is discussed pretty frequently in the Adventure Abroad English Private Teaching Tips group. So we've talked about payment systems, we've talked about platforms, and now the update of, I wanted to talk about Facebook groups, which we've already discussed. Adventure Abroad English is the place to go if you are wanting to learn more about online teaching, doing private teaching, most of, this, of the discussion is centered on teaching in China. There also is, of course, the um, one prior to um, Adventure Abroad that everybody tended to utilize was ESL Diversified with Teacher Lexi. Um, and that's still quite a large group. Um, Teacher Lexi is actually no longer a part of the page. She has... Um, made some changes. She's actually left online ESL teaching. I did speak with her about, well, I guess around the, the time when Zebra English, which was about a week ago, where Zebra English just said, we're done as of today. Um, she spoke with me. She wanted to check in and see how I was doing. And I had a nice conversation with her. She is really enjoying her new position working as um, she's working virtually um, with Kelly Services, which is um, an agency, an online agency where you can find online work. And she highly uh, encourages, if you're interested in checking them out, you should do so. So, Lori, you want to know, how do you get VUV? I could only find the phone option. Um, I've had VUV for over a year, and I downloaded it onto my computer. So I, I am not sure about that. I downloaded VUV onto my computer about a year ago. I'll have to check into that and I will post on this group what the situation is with that. Okay, um, and let's move on to curriculum. So curriculum tends to be, so we have payment, platform, curriculum. Okay, so curriculum is the next area. And again, if you want to check out Adventure Abroad English Private Teaching Tips. There is a lot of information about curriculum there. Um, what I really like is that Michelle, she has formed kind of like um, a group of online teachers who are constantly creating curriculum and they are selling it on Teachers Pay Teachers. Just one moment, Ruslan, I'm gonna be done here shortly and I'm gonna make goulash. I'm making goulash for dinner. And it's one of my kids' favorites, but I need to talk to you guys first. So um, what was I saying? 
Uh, yes. So Michelle, Adventure Abroad English. Michelle is creating curriculum that she is selling on Teachers Pay Teachers. And they are starting, I think they are levels one through four currently, and then they will continue to work at the higher levels. She also has free things that she's given on her Facebook group that has to do with um, book clubs. And I've used some of that material. So check that out. And if you are writing curriculum, you can also sell your curriculum part of the group you will receive the money that is paid from the customers from michelle's group you can also obviously create your own curriculum that you can sell on teachers pay teachers i am creating some of my own curriculum not for sell i'm just kind of doing it on my own i will tell you that there is quite a demand from parents in china for project-based learning project-based learning. That is a very um, highly sought after type of class right now. And with project-based learning, you can have classes that have several students in them. Um, so for example, I was speaking to someone in China who was wanting me to create curriculum for project-based learning. And we talked about five different areas. We would do something on the human body. We'd do something on dinosaurs, something on um, like uh, the earth and um, geography and or talking about climate and weather. Um, anyway, so we came up with five topics that she felt would be interesting. And I, I just have not written the curriculum for it. I found all the materials, but there's only so many hours in the day. I have written some other curriculum for my out school and kid pass classes. And also um, I'll talk about those in a little bit though, about some other types of platforms. You can seek out marketplaces here in the United States if you would like to venture outside of China. So besides the materials that Michelle and her group are putting together that um, are called to Teachers Together Curriculum, that's what uh, their curriculum is called. Teachers Together Curriculum that is what they have available on Teachers Pay Teachers. Besides their curriculum, I would also encourage you to check out Brenda Brooks's curriculum. And she is, her website is here, vlerock.com. She actually just had a cool idea where they did a Halloween themed classroom. I think she did that on Friday. I didn't get to catch it, but um, she is very big into creating classrooms um, that are interactive for students. So check that information out. She's also going through and taking the Zebra English curriculum and creating basically lessons from the Zebra English curriculum. And she has quite a few. I did subscribe to her. I believe it was Five dollars a month to subscribe to her curriculum. So if you would like to check that out, go to vlerock.com or you can also send her a Facebook message. Her name is Brenda Brooks. Brenda Brooks is her name. So Lori, um, with VUV, I uh, just downloaded it from the internet, I believe. But I will follow up on that, okay? So, um, yes, yes, goulash, it's my kid's favorite, favorite thing. So other curriculum that I am seeing a lot of people get really excited about and enjoy using is Crystal Clear, Crystal Clear curriculum. Um, full disclosure, I have not looked at it recently. I looked at it quite some time ago and, um, continued my search because it wasn't something that I was wanting to utilize at that time. However, I have some colleagues from Zebra English who love the curriculum and they like that it is aligned with the standards, um, the global standards of, for learning that um, the CFR acronyms and myself do not do well together. Sometimes acronyms are a little difficult for me. So um, the standards that most curriculum are based off of that were utilized in Crystal Clear's curriculum development. So um, also I did see that Crystal Clear that she has a phonics program as well. And I am I've written some of my curriculum based on Hegarty's 
phonemic awareness and also one of the startups that I am a mentor teacher for is using some phonics based lessons as well. So it's something that is an area of interest for me. Besides crystal clear, we also have Learnaling, and this is probably, um, this was my favorite. Um, and I still do use it frequently, but I am wanting more interactivity. So with Learnaling, currently my students cannot drag and drop. It is, I felt like a few weeks ago, and Jenny does an amazing job. She's from Teach the Distance. Teach the Distance is her website. And she has done an amazing job. The graphics, I think, look great. Um, it, get, it has a feel of a VIP kid lesson to me. And the responses from parents has been really positive about Learnaling's program. She currently has levels two, I'm sorry, one, three, and four five. And so we're waiting on two and four. She does have trial lessons and it is a subscription based curriculum. So um, I got in early, so I was able to get a, a special rate. I think it's maybe 15, $16 a month currently. And she is adding curriculum to it all the time. Um, one one lesson that I did recently, which I thought was pretty cool, the students get to choose if they're going to visit Norway or if they're going to visit Brazil, and it has to do with clothing. And so we learned about the clothing that they wear in Norway versus the clothing that they wear in Brazil. And then we also talk about some of the cultural things that they do. And there's actually a map and the kids can decide where they're going to go. And then you click on it and you can learn things about those different countries. So I thought that that was a lot of fun. Another curriculum that a lot of people are using, which isn't like a full curriculum that addresses all the different areas, but it is online, and that is RAS. And I've talked about RAS before. RAS is primarily a reading curriculum, but you can utilize RAS A to Z. If you use RAS A to Z, you are able to access, you don't just screen share, you can actually print the books, you can share them. Sorry, my dog is wanting my attention. You can share them with your students and there is an online component where the students can log in themselves if you buy the full, full subscription of RAS A to Z. If you just do RAS Plus, then all you can do is share your screen. I do like that RAS has the ability to ask comprehension questions. They have comprehension questions that go with each leveled reader. And you can easily switch from one leveled reader to another. And so when I am working with a new student, I like it because, you know, we don't always know what their level is. And so we can easily switch from one level to another. As far as textbook curriculum, if parents are asking for something more formalized, uh, there is a whole lot of different options, right? So, of course, there's there's Wonders. Another popular one that a lot of parents are asking for is National Geographic, and there are different types. I use natural, National Geographic Reach because, thank you, Lori, Cambridge English Framework, perfect, or Cambridge European. Yes, thank you for that acronym. So, Wonders, National Geographic Reach, those are two that I use. I've also used Cambridge's Power Up series. Uh, those are uh, based from um, Europe, based in Britain, Great Britain. So um, when you, you use any of the audios, they're going to have a British accent. And then I also am using, let's see, I have used in the past some big English I have not recently. And then there's also Big Concepts is another one that I've seen mentioned. And if you want to have access to digital files of these, I would encourage you to seek out Daniel's. Let me check out his Facebook group. All Things China for VIP Kid Teachers. And let's see. All things China for VIP kid teachers. And that's a Facebook group. 
So Daniel is the administrator for that. He goes live sometimes, but he is super helpful. And he has, and this is if you search for him here, his name is Daniel Q-Y-C-A-I. So there is his name. Um, he will add you to his WeChat group. He does have a WeChat group that has a lot, a huge amount of curriculum, probably 30 different um, curricula volumes that you can have access to. Um, so you can check that out as well. Uh, I'm not going to talk about copyright and things like that. Um, that is a discussion for another day. But if that is something that you want to do some screen sharing with the digital files, you can. What I am doing is my parents are actually buying their own copy. And I have purchased some Wonders books myself because when I'm doing lesson planning, I prefer to actually have a book that I can go through. So I have purchased on Amazon some of the Wonders curriculum. Let's see. Um, OK, I wanted to share one other thing with you. And this is something new that has come out. So scheduling, a lot of people are also asking, what do I, how can I do scheduling? Is there anything that will allow me to manage my scheduling, my payment and my notes and all of that? And the answer to that is yes. Um, a lot of people have found TutorBird to be helpful. It's a subscription service where you can, um, you can link it with your Stripe and PayPal accounts for invoicing. Parents can also schedule through that. Uh, you can also use things like Calendly. Calendly is a scheduling service. There's also a program Acuity. Acuity is a scheduling service. Uh, the speech therapy clinic that I work for uses Acuity. There's also the program 10 to 8. Um, one of my coaches uses 10 to 8. And then a new one that... I've seen posted about that one particular teacher has been discussing is AO tree, AO tree. So this is a newer one. I don't know a lot about AO tree, but what I'm being told is that you are able to um, use it for scheduling and processing of payments. Of course, again, there is a subscription fee. So I think those were all the things that we talked about in the zoom. Those were the questions that people had. Um, want to remind all of you to be considering the time change. If you live in the parts of the world that do have a time change coming up here, when we fall back, you're going to want to practice. You're going to want to look into the future with that. Uh, I personally am trying to move away from, I don't want to teach any earlier than 5 30 a.m 6 a.m 6 a.m is my preferred time so i don't want my 6 a.m students to move back to 5 a.m so i'm going to have to figure that out and so if you are having your parents pay in advance which i strongly encourage you to do i have not had any parent tell me that they felt uncomfortable with paying in advance um, so i would encourage you to do that think about how many weeks out that you're committing to for that or if they would be willing to switch I think the uh, last thing that I wanted to segue into is finding students in other countries and how can we do that? So out school is really tough right now. I am actually not hired. I'm not um, officially hired by out school, but I am working for an organization that is in out school and we have attempted a variety of classes the classes that we're seeing right now that are booking more than the more academic based classes are ones that have social aspects with them. I'm trying to get some pods going. We've applied for them. I do have classes that I do teach. I have had some classes book, not a lot. Um, I've had more luck at Kid Pass. Kid Pass is not as saturated with teachers. And at Kid Pass, they have something that's called a live stage where uh, every teacher can sign up for a maximum of five live stages a week. And in that live stage, it's kind of like here, what I'm doing right now with this live on YouTube, except I can see my students. The platform they use is Zoom, but all of the students are muted by 
um, kid pass and you could have up to 200 students in a live session, but don't freak out guys. I've only had maybe 25 at the most and I am able to go through and unmute and ask questions so that my lessons are more interactive. My student age levels there are typically three to about six. Those are the students that I prefer to teach. And so they actually do really well with that. And I feel that Kid Pass is more their customer. Their, their typical customer tends to be more the preschool age. So if you're not familiar with Kid Pass, you can check it out. It was a lot easier for me to get hired there than um, in my attempts at OutSchool that didn't work. But I did figure out why I didn't get hired at, at OutSchool. I was, um, my application and my video was too speech therapyized, it's too much speech therapized. It looked too much like speech therapy and um, that's a medical service. And so they don't want anyone to be trying to do speech therapy, which I was not. I was just using some of the principles of speech therapy and that caused them to say, we don't want that here. The other thing that I would suggest to you, if you are going to segue from ESL work to teaching at OutSchool or KidPass, is to recognize that you do not need to use TPR. Um, that was another big thing that I am seeing that OutSchool, if teachers are applying and then their demo videos are using a lot of TPR, they are going to say no. And also, they don't want you to talk more slowly. They want you to use a normal speaking rate as if you were in a classroom in a native in an English speaking country. Um, what else? Oh, and then finally, startup news. So there are a lot of startups, right? All school, all school is a startup. And if you, if you do your demo, if you apply and do your demo before the 20th, you will be part of their initial group of teachers who only have a 15% um, cut. So for those who apply and do their demo before October 20th, which it's coming up, right? Yeah, just a few days. Then all school will only take 15% of your class rate. And most other places are much more than that, like 25 to 30%. So if you are considering all school is a marketplace, just like out school, and they have a special deal right now that if you are an out school teacher, that you're basically hired. All you have to do is share your, your um, profile page from out school and you get a fast pass that you will get hired. All school has the option of just like out school where you teach your own curriculum. They, they in, in, in conjunction with that, they have curriculum that they have formed as well. That's more in STEM, math and sciences, and not as big in language arts, but they have their own curriculum that they have written that you can teach. That demo process is slightly different, but if you would like to, you can check out right now. Their, face, their website is still under construction, but they do have a Facebook group that I will share with you. And that is all school, here we go. It's all school prospective educators. And they are actually really wanting, they posted in the Ding Talk, um, they posted in the Ding Talk that we have that they really want teachers who can teach uh, social media classes, um, classes like Roblox and um, all of us and things like that. Uh, also drama, music, arts, uh, coding. Those are all classes that they are really wanting curriculum for on their platform. So Lori, where can I find pronunciation programs? So pronunciation programs, Lori, that's my specialty. I deal with pronunciation and um I'm kind of, hmm, what can I say? I think pronunciation is, is a very much of a niche, and I don't think that everyone should teach pronunciation because with speakers who are speaking a variety of languages, they bring a lot of things from their native language that unless you study linguistics and unless you study the, the phonemic, 
portion of their language. So phonics, understanding um, how to read what IPA, um, International Phonetic Alphabet, um, it, it just requires a lot more research and knowledge. So if you would like to do pronunciation classes, there are a couple of programs out there. There is accent modification and accent reduction platforms that you can apply to. I feel that there are some ESL teachers who can do a great job of this, but they are people who have a linguistics background or they have done additional training so that they can specialize in that area. So, hey, Kenda, nice to see you. So you applied at all school. So yes. So Kenda, all school. Um, so here it is. Here's the thing with startups. They get backed up. Things don't move as quickly. All school has already moved back their projected start date. They were hoping to be going in October. Now it's been pushed back to November. I do think that they have some quality there. Um, they just, they have a small staff and <clears throat> they have one person that's processing applications that I am aware of and they have been flooded with applications. So yes, it is taking some time. I would say be patient and you could send an email early this week. You could also post on the Facebook page, but the Facebook page has had people say, hey, I haven't heard back. What do I do? But I will say, Kenda, if you did your initial application from the Facebook page and read very closely, read all the information on their Facebook page. If you did that uh, Google Doc, I think it was like a Google form, and then you submit your demo. If you do that before the 20th, you are good to go. So um, don't worry about missing that date. That is one thing that they have said in the Dean Top group with those teachers who have already submitted their curriculum and things like that. Okay, I think that's about it. I think I went through all of the different things. I would encourage all of you that are watching this video, I am putting together a newsletter where I am going to give these type of tips and new things that I learned because I am constantly in the Facebook groups as I am trying to improve my own business. If you would like to receive these kinds of tips and tricks from me, I would love to share them with you. I am going to have an email newsletter. I've written the first edition. If you would like to receive that email newsletter, you can send me a message. I will list my email um, on my YouTube channel, which is already there. Also, you can go to my Facebook group. My Facebook group is Teacherpreneur Tips and Tricks. It's my Facebook group, and you can always send me a private message there. All right, guys, have a great week. My tip to you is search. Use the search function on Facebook before you ask a question, because chances are, if you're asking a question about platforms, payment, curriculum, those three things have been discussed a lot in the Facebook groups that deal with online teaching, particularly my favorite group. And I will share it here again. My favorite group is, um, sorry, I want to share it, Adventure Abroad English Private Teaching Tips. I think that that is the most in, um, helpful group that I have seen at this time. There are some also some other ones. I wish mine was as amazing as Michelle, but Michelle has just been really involved with teaching online longer than I have, and she is super helpful. Okay, guys, have a great week and happy teaching. See ya.